glad you were able to join us here today on Black Solutions and everything and really love what you're doing in the in the industry with an entertainment sports and just being a, a pioneer. I'm trying. It's not the easiest, but I guess people are still learning about it. But I just like I guess God, I gotta take it day by day. That's all. Oh yeah, yeah. You're doing it. Hey, you're doing it. I was an athlete, so I, I know the I know the struggle of just one being a black athlete and you you being a woman, that's that's huge. So um I'm I'm very delighted for you to join us today. So if you didn't know we got the lovely Tony Harris today, uh football player, revolutionary, really just doing a big um <laughs> Received a scholarship to Central Met Methodist University, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yes. How was yep, your experience? Central Methodist University. How was your experience this past season? Uh, so this past season, I did not play. I had some health problems going on. But the overall experience with being with the guys and being with the school, it's not really a difference from coming from JUCO. It all still seems so normal to me. I may not see a difference, but maybe they do. But like I said, it's just normal. The hours are different now, you know, that – fall camp that's three weeks long getting up at 5 a.m yeah, not being able to go yeah. big until 11 o'clock so that that was the the different part you yeah. know the first day I got out there I'm like dang these hours are long but I guess you got to do what you got to do if you want to play ball okay I get you I get you so we've been asking all our guests um during this corona situation about their um, mm -hmm. the shows they've been binging and the snacks they've been eating what have you been binging watching on Netflix Hulu and what are your what's your go-to snacks? I've been watching a little bit of everything. My go-to snack is sunflower seeds, the dill pickle sunflower seeds. Okay. I munch on those that the whole time I'm watching. But uh I've been binge watching the American Crime Story, the assassination of Giovanni Versace. I heard about and that. I've yeah. yes, it was really good actually. I've binge watched that and I've been binge watching Grey's Anatomy, uh How to Get Away with Murder, 911. Uh, Station 19, all these different shows that are on Hulu, and fi uh, Little Fireflies with Kerry Washington and uh, Reese Witherspoon. That one has to be my favorite. How was that? How was oh that? my God, that show is so crazy. I've never seen Reese play in such a role where she was just like so sadity and so sneaky. I, it made yeah. me want to want to lay lay hands, but I had to tell myself, Tony, it's just <laughs> a show. It is yeah. just a show. <laughs> so. Back to the football stuff. Uh, a lot of people don't know you were the first woman to receive a football scholarship to a four-year university that was a non-kicking role. Um, how did that yeah. opportunity? How did that opportunity come about? Can you give us a little bit of background about that? I can tell you it didn't come about well. <laughs> so uh, when I was coming out of high school, I originally was supposed to walk on to the University of Toledo, but then I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer, okay. so I had to sit out for two years. Yeah, I sat out for two years not playing ball before, uh, right when I went into remission. Wow. I ended up moving to California, changed like just changed my whole okay. scenery. I left Detroit, moved to California. I originally went to a, a junior college here in, at Golden West in 2016, but the coach didn't want to let me play there. So while I was wow. going to that school, I ended up transferring to another JUCO, going to both of them and taking classes for both of them, getting three different degrees. Okay. to go play at East Los Angeles College, where I played for two years uh, under coach Bobby Godinez, and that's where I ended up getting my six scholarships from. Wow. Yeah. You have a journey. So, you need to write a book. Oh, my me. God. I graduated <laughs> in 2014, and it's 2020, and I, it's like this process has been so long, but I'm just happy God has put the strength in me to be able to stay with it. That's great. That's great. So you grew up um, watching your cousin play football and family and everything like that. What about what about the game really sparked you to want to join and, and put on the pads and, and really be on the field instead of being a cheerleader like you were? Uh, see, the different thing about me is I've never cheered for football. I've only cheered for basketball and being competitive cheer, so I don't know what it is like to be a cheerleader for football. But I think what really sparked me okay. is, you know, going out there, seeing my cousin be so competitive, be, having people mad at him and hitting and, you know, all of that, it just – and not only just those things that are competitive, just having to be in a family with me, you know, being adopted and everything. I just wanted to find something that was, you know, steady. Some some people that I could be around, you know, that I could call my family without being going from one place to the next, one place to the next. And so that kind of, you know, stood out a little bit. But overall, like I said, I just love the competitive. I'm competitive in everything I do. I'm a Leo, so it's it's kind of in my blood. Okay, okay, I feel it, I feel it. Who was your yeah. team growing up? Who'd you like? Being from Michigan, uh, are you a Lions fan? 
No, I'm not a Lions fan. I support the Lions, but I'm not a Lions fan. Okay, I'm good. a Seattle Seahawks okay. fan. Okay, Legion of Boom. Okay. okay. Yes, I am. Okay, I like yes. Okay. Hey, I like that. Okay, Marshawn. <laughs> he's from Oakland, where I'm from, so I'm a huge Marshawn fan. So oh yeah, yeah. Every time I'm trying to listen to those. listen to Marshawn. I'm trying to save my chicken, like you said. Exactly. 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 That's cool. So, what do you like about like when you're on the field? What's what's like what just motivates you? What keeps you going? Is it from just the locker room? Just is, do you like film study? Like what what really keeps you going about the sport? Uh, I don't think nobody really likes film study just because we're in there uh, for long amounts of time. Yeah. But I think what what keeps me going is the fact that you know uh, going through so much in life is just so much adversity. I think what pushes me is you know the fact that people always telling me no, no you can't do this, no you can't do that. And so being out there on the field is the biggest perception that I've had of all the people telling me, no, you shouldn't be a football player. No, you can't play defense. No, you can't catch a ball. Doing all of that stuff. And every day I'm out there proving people wrong. And that motivates me to keep going every single day. And now I know that, you know, I can't give up because now there are people not only that want to see me succeed, but most of them want to see me fail. And so I have to keep going. It's no choice. It's not no option for failure right now. No, definitely. The marathon continues. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yes. Definitely. So from all your years of playing football, what are what are some of the biggest life lessons you've learned from playing football, from anything, from just the coaches or players or just anything you can apply to life? I think one of the biggest life lessons I've learned is, like, I have a tattoo on me that says, uh, it's on my right, um, is it my right or my left? Uh, it's on my right uh, rib, and it says, be so good they can't ignore you. Because one time there was a coach in my lifetime who told me that I would never get paid to be put on scholarship because I just wasn't as fast, wasn't as big as other guys, and that yeah. no one would ever pay me to play at the next level. So I have that tattoo that reminds yeah. me every day that I, all I have to do is just be so good that they won't ignore my talent. And obviously it's worked out, you know, as in present day right now. So that's something that has kind of motivated me and pushed me to know – that I can never give up. Because like I said, it doesn't matter what school you go to, doesn't matter what city or state you're in, if you have the talent, they will find you. That's true. That's very true. Whatever, yeah, whatever yeah. sport. Yeah. Look at the NFL draft this year. You got people going from NAI, D3, D2s. It's talent everywhere. Yeah, they'll find you. You're right. They will find you. Yes, they will. So I've been seeing you Super Bowl commercial, you've been getting a lot of notoriety. Mm -hmm. I just watched your, um, not too long ago, I just watched your interview on Overtime, really big mm -hmm. media publication. Um, what's been all, has this been really surreal or is this something you've dreamed about and how have you taken in all this positive reception? I think I was able to prepare myself for things that could happen like this just because, you know, I am a female football player and I know mm -hmm. it's not seen as much as, well, it's seen a lot more today than it used to be. But yeah. I knew that with me trying to break barriers and go on to the next level, that it would, you know, cause a lot of attention. And so I tried to mentally pre pre prepare myself for moments like this. Uh, yes, it's still surreal. It, I still can't believe I've been in two Super Bowl commercials. But uh, like I said, I'm just taking it day by day and just thanking God for the blessings that he's put ahead of me. Okay, okay. Who are, the, uh, who are your favorite athletes you've met so far from – being at all these events and everything somebody who was just maybe looked up to or like oh my god that's really him like and they maybe know who you were uh you know i have to say cameron jordan he's okay. a favorite yeah russell wilson he's also a favorite lamar jackson yeah. uh kevin bayard and ryan logan those are a few especially you know me and kevin were the same uh number and everything and we play the same position uh i haven't met cam chancellor but i yeah. have talked to cam chancellor and had conversations with him uh so I really look forward to that. But I really I really want to meet Dion. I mean, it's been in the works, but, you know, with all the quarantine stuff going yeah. on, uh, it I was supposed to be at the draft this year. I was at the Pro Bowl, but with, since it had to be a virtual draft, we had to do, like, the virtual video stuff. And, you know, it was crazy. But hopefully I'll be able to meet a couple more people uh, in my lifetime. Okay. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. Now, what advice would you give to a lot of the young women out there who are just – trying to do something like you do, maybe play football or just get outside of their comfort zone, what advice would you give them? I would tell them to just do it. Stop letting people tell you what you can and what you can't do because at the end of the day, God made both man and woman. And he never put a stipulation on what should and what shouldn't be. 
Nobody ever said that football was a man sport. They only allowed it to be a man sport is because most men wanted to play it. Yeah. But you also see in the in the football league, it's not called men's national football league. It's just called the national football league. True. Which is not saying that women can't be in it. It's just you know, a lot, men do it, and people are not used to seeing. They want women to stay in these 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 roles before we came along, getting our own jobs, being able to vote, and you know, just not being a woman that stays home to be there for her men. We've become more independent than we were back in the day, and. I use that independency just throughout life, period. Like, I feel like I could, if I want to play any sport, tennis, lacrosse, racquetball, swimming, uh, water polo, I feel like I could do anything as long as I put my mind to it. And I feel like any woman should feel like that. Because at the end of the day, you can do it just as much as anybody else that thinks you can't do it, you know? You have to fight for what you want. You have to take that risk. That's true. That's true. That's true. So going to the future, maybe a year from now, five, ten, where do you see yourself? Like, you know, I know you have dreams of playing professionally, but mm -hmm. outside of that, what do you see yourself growing as a, as a woman and just in the world and, you know, doing things? Yeah. So I have, I do have dreams playing with the NFL, but I know that, you know, 1% only make it. So if I don't go to the NFL, you know, I'm not going to be mad at that. I have my degrees that'll back me up. And I also have long life plans to, I, uh, to have a degree in criminal justice with a minor in forensics. So I could see myself being a forensic psychologist, um, a homicide detective, but what I really want to do is um, use that degree and just, you know, being like an NFL analyst or something, opening up the door for more women for them to be able to create a, a NFL for women. I hope nobody tried to steal my dream because I'm saying it on live, but I would love to work with the NFL <laughs> yeah, to it. try to make a, w, a WNFL yeah. for women so that we won't have to keep trying to compete with men. Because trust me, if there was a WNFL, I would not be trying to go to the NFL, but I can only get so far. No, I get you. I get you. I get yeah. you. Yeah. I hope that comes true. Nobody saw right there. You might, you might I hope. Get that I, patent, you know what I'm saying? Right. Let me yeah. knock on some wood. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate you talking to us today. Let everybody know how they can follow you. You know, drop your social media, website, all that good stuff. Okay. You guys can follow me on Twitter at Tony Harris, T O N I H A R I S. Follow me on Instagram at underscore Tony Harris. Follow me on Facebook at Tony Harris. Great, great. Well, Tony, thank you again. Thank you for talking to us here at Black Solutions in the World. I hope you're safe. I hope your family's doing good. Bless you, everything. And um, we just we, we wish you the best. We really wish you the best. Thank you so much for having me. I applaud you guys. I am following you guys. And I am looking for more stories from inspirational Black people. Oh, you'll get them. We got them coming. <laughs> All right. You Thanks so care. much. No problem. All right, you. Bye-bye.